Welcome to the second episode of the Fountain Modeling Guide. Today I will show you how to prepare a trim sheet, which is a texture that can be used on many different objects, so in the graphics engine you can use one material for several models. First I prepare a simple plane in Blender. Using the combination 5 plus 7 on Numpad, I change the camera to isometric top view. Now using Ctrl plus R, I divide the planes into individual islands with different textures. I keep looking at the concept and adjusting the scale of individual islands. The more space they occupy on a plane, the larger parts of the UV mesh will be able to fit there, which means the better quality of the texture. I decided to divide the plane into six parts. Bricks, concrete, something like marble, steel and two smaller islands for transparent layers ornaments and destruction. As you can see, our plane covers our UV surface completely down to the pixel. This means that the end of the pattern on the texture on the left will also be the beginning of the pattern on the right, so when we place the same texture next to each other, we will not see any seams. Now I click Ctrl A and select Apply Transforms, name my plane and export the model as FBX. Then we go to Substance Painter and create a new project using the newly created FBX. I drag the brick material into the hierarchy and rotate it to vertical. I right click and select Add Black Mask. Then right click on the created black mask again and select the Add Paint option. This window is not currently showing on the screen because the recording app did not capture it, but everything will be visible later. Then, using the tool to fill individual polygons, we paint the bricks on the first layer, remembering to do it with the paint option selected and the color as wide as possible. Thanks to this, the brick appeared only in the designated place. Now we can go to the brick material options by clicking on its thumbnail in the layer screen and turn on the normal map visibility. It is possible to manually configure this brick, but I decided to choose a preset which is evenly spaced bricks. Then I made minor corrections and stretched the texture so one row of bricks perfectly covers the designated area of the texture. If the material has various types of controls for its properties, it is worth checking what they do. In my case, I was able to achieve greater irregularity between the bricks and more detailed light reflection. Now we search for the appropriate concrete and drag it to the top of layers window and as before create a black mask with a paint option. If you are not satisfied with a given texture, you can easily replace it by changing it in the properties window. It is worth testing different materials and checking what indicators they have. This will allow you to achieve an effect as close as possible to the intended one.
To create another layer with a texture, drag it into the layers window again, add a black mask, paint option and paint. Now it's time to turn on transparency in our project and add it to the material. To do this, go to the shader settings and select the PBE Metal Rough with Alpha Blending option. Then we add the opacity channel in the Texture Set Settings tab. After doing this, we create a new fill layer, deselect all channels except opacity and set the opacity value to 0. Thanks to this, after adding the paint option, we can paint over our texture fragment with a transparent covering. Now, using a specific brush, we can repaint the transparency to obtain the shape we are satisfied with. Personally, I recommend brushes from JRO, the guy does an amazing job. However, I would like our decorations to be golden in color. To do this, create a new layer using some gold material as a base and place it under the layer with transparency. Classically, we add a black mask with a paint option. Then we paint the same place that we painted on the transparency layer. Then we can paint a fragment of the texture on the transparency layer using the brush with a pattern. Thanks to this, we will obtain the shape we are interested in on a transparent background. To obtain convexities, we enter the transparency layer, turn on the height channel and set its value. In my case, it is the maximum value, which is 1. Then, using various shapes, I paint the entire row of ornaments in the paint option on the transparency layer. To make it easier, I do this on a two-dimensional window on the right side. The final step in painting texture layers will be to create a destruction material that we can easily apply to the edges of the model to give them the illusion of destruction without having to create it on a mesh. For this purpose, we classically create a layer with a material, in this case cement. We add a black mask, the paint option and paint the last texture island. Then we create a transparent layer over the cement one, as in the case of ornaments, and set the opacity value to zero. Create fill layer, leave only the opacity channel selected, add a black mask, paint the option, and paint the same place as the cement. Then we add one more paint option to the same transparent layer. We choose an irregular brush, I personally like Dirt 2. Set the hardness of the brush to the maximum value. Using the Shift K we can repaint evenly along the horizontal axis. Thanks to this, our brush will connect the left and the right side. Then using a brush, I try to even out both sides to hide the visible cut between the left and right sides as much as possible.
Thanks to all these steps, we now have a nice looking trim sheet, but it's still missing a detail. Then we create a new layer with only the height channel selected, set alignment to UV and paint the protrusions with a soft brush. For concavity painting, we do the same but change the height value from 1 to minus 1. After painting a few layers of ridges on the cement texture, I do the same on the metal. Then, using the previously burnt curvature map, I upload it as a fill layer and add the levels option to obtain a clear and contrasting texture. Once the effect matches, I export the diffuse map. You can use any preset and only use base color, but I already have a preset ready to export only this texture. Then I import this texture back into the project and put it as a fill layer. I'm experimenting with the layer modes and layer visibility to get a nice dark noise effect on the texture. Then I added a white mask and repainted the areas when I didn't want the noise texture. I do the same for the ridges on the metal. The last thing I noticed before finishing the texture preparation stage was that in the concept the space between the bricks were dark, so I decided to change it in mine as well. When we are satisfied with the effects, we can export the texture by selecting the Unreal Engine 4 preset and choose 4K texture resolution. The trim sheet is done. We can go back to Blender and create our final object. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more.